Okay, and we're going to get started, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Transportation Advisory Committee meeting for Tuesday, January 25th. Shall we stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance? Give me just a second. I'm sorry about that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, everyone. Um, so the, um, do we, we, what about minutes from, oh, no, that will be later. Sorry. Okay, so let's do roll call. Chair, members of the board, members of the committee, my name is Annabelle Valenzuela, and our meeting is starting at 12.01, and I will take roll call. We'll start with Albert Letzkis. And it's not going to be on the board. Is it? John Winchester. Dan Ekstrom. Melissa Brown Dominguez. We have vacancy in District 3. Charlene Robinson. Tom Berenzi. Present. Lucretia Free. Present. Frank Santa Cruz. Here. Ed Berberg. Present. John Bernal. Here. Tom McGovern. Here. Ramon Valadez. For the record, we have John Winchester absent, Dan Ekstrom absent, Melissa Brown Dominguez absent, Charlene Robinson absent, and we have a quorum. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so we are going to be, I'm going to be turning over to Anna for some um, changes in transportation staff in just a moment. But before doing so, I just wanted to acknowledge um, Rich Franz Under who has been working with us low these many um, months, years, working on uh, PTAC. Um, very grateful to you, Rich, and all that you've done with us. I know we worked very closely on the subcommittees in the early months of the PTAC. Um, you were always very thorough and continue to be very thorough in your meetings uh, and the way you conduct yourself with the information that you provide to us. So I just wanted to do a shout out and thank you before turning it over to Anna. And best to you on whatever your future endeavors are. Uh, well, thank you, Madam Chair, uh, for those kind words. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Ana Olivares. I'm the Transportation Director for Pima County. So as this year has brought many changes for all of us, it has brought some changes for us in our department. So I'm going to introduce some new staff that we are very happy to have on board as part of our team. And if they are here, I'm going to ask them to put on their video so that the committee can see them, meet them kind of in person until we can actually meet in person. So I'm going to start off with Lauren Ortega. Lauren Ortega is our new deputy director. If uh, members can remember, we had uh, Jorge Riveros was our other deputy director last year. So he resigned and uh, we were very lucky to have Lauren come and join our team. She comes from our development services department here at Pima County. She was deputy director there, and um, she is going to assist Catherine and I in running the department from this point forward. Yes, our other new employee is Matt Sierras. Uh, he is a new division manager for maintenance and operations. 
if you all remember, Rob Lane uh, resigned last year as well. So he, um, Matt is um, his replacement, and uh, Matt comes with um, a lot of the years of experience from the city of Tucson maintenance area and construction areas of the city of Tucson. So he's very well qualified, and we're very happy to have him on our team as well. Um, another new member that we have is Jason Boley. He is a, our pavement management manager. So another face that you might have been familiar with um, for the last few years was John Olivas. Um, he retired last year. So Jason is taking over his responsibilities and running our pavement management program, our contracts, and helping uh, generate, helping um, put our packages together that we put out to bid for our pavement management program. And then, as Lucretia mentioned, Rich Franz Under is retiring. His last day is actually February 2nd, so it's imminent. Uh, and we will uh, hate to see him go for uh, all his help, not only with our payment management program in this committee, for many other things that he's done in our department. Uh, so we were also very lucky to be able to hire Gabe Leva um, to replace uh, Rich. We were lucky to be able to hire Gabe before Rich retired. So there's been a lot of transfer of knowledge. So it'll seem seamless to everybody um, <laughs> for all the duties that, and responsibilities Rich had. So it, that has been really good for us to have Gabe on board um, for a few months before Rich leaves. And that has been, um, that will really help us as we move forward. So there should be no break in our scenarios that we run with our Street Saver program and running forward with our list. So those are our new staff. They're part of our great team that we already have, and we're all here and happy to help the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. I had no doubt that you would be able to uh, create yet another successful team working with PTAC and working with the residents of Pima County. Um, so we have a new um, committee member who has recently joined us. Her name is Charlotte Robinson, and she's from Congressional District. I'm sorry, she's from um, District 3. And I just wanted to turn it over to you, Charlene, uh, to give a brief introduction of who you are and your passion for roads and being on this committee and welcome. Can you hear me, Lucretia? Okay, I'm having trouble hearing you. Actually, you couldn't hear me because I just unmuted myself. Okay, yes, hi, welcome. I can hear you and I am going to mute myself now and give you the opportunity to introduce yourself to our committee. Did you hear her, Charlene? Can you hear me now, Charlene? Okay, well, it sounds like... Charlene is having some technical difficulties. Uh, Charlene, at any point, let I'll give me the high five. I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Sounds like we're having some technical difficulty at, at any point um, when she wants to, if she's able to get the technology together, we will allow her to give a, a brief. Is this still not working? Introduction um, of herself. Um, Annabelle, is there a way to send her a text message or something? Yes, Chair. I have sent her a message to, um, to let us know when she can introduce herself, but um, and just a couple of other items that I wanted to announce before we continue. Sure. That, we, that um, Ms. Charlene Robinson is now present, part of the meeting, and also Super, um, Dan Ekstrom also is present um, via audio. So um, they are now part of the record that they are present. And then also Supervisor Steve Christie um, is also present as our attendee list, so I wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you. Welcome, Supervisor Christie. How are you today? I'm doing. I'm doing great. Thank you. Can you hear me? I sure can. 
Um, as always, you know that you are welcome to um, add insight, commentary at any point. Just give me the high sign and I will recognize you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, now we move on to um, our um, officer elections. So as you all know, this was this is my last meeting being chair, although I will continue to attend the meetings as a regular member. Um, at this point, I will open the floor for nominations. The process will go that we'll do nominations for the chair first. In order for a nomination to be voted on, it needs to be a first. There needs to be a first and a second. And then we'll and do the same thing for a vice chair. So at this point, I'll... Madam I'll, Chair. Um, I, I um, see Tom Beresny. Tom Beresny. Tom I'm getting a lot of feedback. Madam Chair, I would like to nominate Ed Verberg as the chair of the PTAC for this year. Okay. Ed, are you on the call? Can you... I am. Okay. Um, do we... Uh, I guess... <laughs> do we have a second for discussion around Ed? Okay. Al Albert is seconding. Um, Ed, are you open to being the chair of the PTAC? Uh, I hadn't expected this, but um, I would be happy to serve. Wonderful. Do we have any other nominations for chair? If this is supposed to be competitive, may I make a nomination? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. You, you certainly can. Go ahead. Well, I was going to uh, nominate... Uh, Ramon Valadez. I know he's new to the committee, but he has a lot of experience that could help us tremendously. He knows the history of a lot of things, and he knows how to run meetings, frankly. So he has a lot of good uh, points that I would put out there for consideration. Absolutely, he does. Is there a second for Ramon Valadez? Okay, so you are... Oh, I'm sorry. Can I hear a second? Yes, from Dan Eck. Thank you, Dan. Um, so there's a second for Ramon Valadez. Now, from a process standpoint, does the, uh, Annabelle, does the person who is being nominated need to be able to accept the nomination? The bylaws do not indicate and I spoke with with um, Ramon Valadez yesterday to let him know that there would be a potential nomination, and he said he would accept. Okay. Um, well, another piece of uh, with the with the nominees is I'm asking um, those who are nominated to just talk for a couple for a very short, you know, a few seconds about their interest in being the chair. So, Ed, do you want to go? Since you are the one on the call, are you there? Yes, thank you. Uh, first off, I'd like to model after our current chair. I think she's done a fantastic job. Uh, running the meetings uh, in terms of input from the members, but the public input and recognizing supervisors when they come on board, all done in a very good fashion. So I wanted to thank her for her, her expertise and her willingness to look at different views and really run a great meeting. So thank you. And I do have a background in undergraduate school with uh, surveying, and I've been responsible for road maintenance in our neighborhood here for years. And uh, frankly, I just have a great interest in improving the roads in our county, and I think it's all going in the right direction with this committee's input and with the staff's input. So I would look forward to working with all of you. Uh, I had not expected this nomination, but uh, I do appreciate the consideration. Okay, well, thank you uh, for those comments, Ed. And since Ramon isn't on the call, I cannot ask him to do same. But as we heard from Annabelle, he is definitely um, open and willing to be the chair if he is elected to do so. And we know his experience through his role at the um, on the supervisor, uh, the board of supervisors for Pima County, and many other roles that he has played. Um, so at, at this point, uh, we'll have a vote. Um, does everyone have access to the raise hand feature on the... So you'll be able to track, you'll be able to track that Annabelle, correct? Or can you tell people where to find it just in case there's some that don't know where it is? Yeah, 
Do you wish to do the raise hand option or do you wish for me to do roll call? Mm, roll, roll call would be best. So let's start with um, Ed Berberg. All those in favor of uh, Ed Berberg and Annabelle will do a roll call. Okay. Albert Letzkis? Yes. John Winchester? Dan Ekstrom? Melissa Brown Dominguez? Charlene Robinson? Tom Berenzi? Yes. Patricia Freed? I think I'll abstain from the election. Frank Santa Cruz? Yes. Ed Verberg? Yes. John Bernal? Yes. Tom McGovern? Yes. Ramon Valadez? Okay, so then can you summarize those findings for us, Annabelle? Six yeses. Is that a quorum? We need to have a majority? We do. We need to have, um, do you want to do the other election first? The other? Mm -hmm. I just want to know how many, how many people would we, so how many of us are on the call today? Everything changed, I'm sorry, let me count. Um, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we so have nine on the call and six have voted for him. Okay. For and, then, and then now let's do um, roll call for Ramon Valadez. Albert Letzkis. No. John Winchester. Dan Ekstrom. Melissa Brown Dominguez. Charlene Robinson. Tom Berenzi. Lucretia Free. Staying. Frank Santa Cruz. Ed Verberg? I don't know that I can vote twice on this. Uh, yes, so I guess I have to abstain. John Bernal? No. Tom McGovern? No. I default. And Ramon Valadez? So Ed Verberg has the votes for the chair. Okay, well, congratulations, Ed. Um, do you have the agenda there before you? Can we make, can we, can we get the board to approve, uh, the committee to approve um, the, the chair vote, the full okay. motion? Okay, so uh, say again what the vote was for Ed. Six. A and are we in agreement that Ed will be our next um, chair? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Fantastic. Ed, do you have a, a, a uh, agenda there before you so I can turn the meeting over to you? I would love it if you'd finish running this meeting. You've done <laughs> such a fantastic job. I don't mind doing it, but I just like the way you do it. What, what what is the can I I don't know that I can do it when I'm not the chair. What what's what are the bylaws saying about? Once the election happens, it would be favorable if the new chair took over. All right, then have we taken uh, action on the minutes? We should probably do that. So they did come out. Uh, may I have a motion uh, to approve the minutes? 
Mr. Chair, before you move on, this is John Bernal. Yes. Should we uh, elect? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Oh, my gosh. Yes, we need to do a vice chair. My goodness. Oh, yes. I apologize to everyone. Um, well, you can still run the meeting then. <laughs> <laughs> we codified Ed before. I'll, I'll go since the uh, elections are were under where I was supposed to still be running. I'll go ahead and handle the elections and then bow out. So, um, are there any motions for vice chair? Madam Chair, this is John Bernal. Yes, John. Uh, it's unfortunate that Charlene Robinson can introduce herself, but I've known Charlene for quite some time, and I think she's a very welcome addition to this committee, and I'd like to nominate her for vice chair. Do we have a second for Charlene for vice chair? Second. Charlene, are you still unable to... Uh... Yeah, I can see she's on her phone, so I'm guessing. Okay, are there any... Uh, let's see. Are there any other nominations or comments regard? Sorry, are there any other comments with regard to Charlene as vice chair before we move on to see if there's anyone else who would like to be nominated? Chair Free, um, Charlene does accept the nomination. Okay, okay, fantastic. Is there anyone else who would like to either make a nomination or you're also allowed to nominate yourself for vice chair? Okay, so Annabelle, we can do a roll call vote for. Charlene for vice chair. Madam okay. chair, uh, yes. just uh, curious, do we really have to vote? Uh, how about just a motion uh, that uh, that the committee approve Charlene as the uh, vice chair? I don't know what Make the bylaws say. Annabelle, what do the bylaws say? Do we have to actually vote? Um, well, that is a vote. Oh, you're saying not, not do a roll I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I understand. You're saying not do a roll call vote just do a vote, especially she's unopposed. Correct. So all those in favor of Charlene for vice chair? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Okay. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, everyone. And again, I apologize to you, Charlene, for <clears throat> my screw up there. So now I'm out. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> well, I hope that's the only type of mistake I make. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so, do we have a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting? So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any comments? I'm sorry, could you repeat who made the first motion? Um, McGovern did. McGovern, thank you. Did you get who seconded, Annabelle? And the second came from? Tom Bresny. Tom, thank you. Okay, then any comments on the agenda before we take final action? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, very good. <clears throat> Let's move on. It seems like um, road repairs update. Uh, Michelle? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I am Michelle Montanino, um, Pima County um, sorry, Pima County Assistant um, Division Manager for Maintenance and Operations. And um, with your pleasure, I will provide you with an update on where we stand with our fiscal 22 program. Let me share my screen. Everybody see the screen? So... Um, in our completed projects, I don't think a whole lot has changed since the last time we met. Um, the Green Valley and the Catalina Central ADA curb ramp projects were wrapping up um, right before our last meeting. Town of Ajo was obviously finished back um, in the middle of November. Um, and I'm not sure if we reported La Bella New Day as completed at our last meeting or not. Um, it was substantially complete by the time we met in December. Well, I guess at the end of November, um, but they still had some um, last minute punch list items and a few utility adjustments that hung out. So their um, official completion date was the 10th of December. 
Um, moving on to our in construction, we've had a lot of things um, recently start. Um, in our curb ramp projects, we have three new curb ramp projects that are now underway. Um, this will be the, so what we see now between the two that were finished and these four are the entirety of our curb ramp projects for this year. Um, so countryside south of CDO and the north of CDO projects are all new, all going strong. Um, so there's lots of curb ramp work going out there um, and those will all be wrapped up before the end of March. Um, and ahead of the paving that will be coming following behind it. Um, on the surface treatment side, our crack sealing project has gone started underway. Um, it will be done by the end of about February, end of February timeframe. They are beginning in the Colossal Cave area, so we'll be seeing some activity on that front. Um, we In the paving and milling and paving side, we had four large hard bid projects that all started um, since the beginning of December. Um, the districts one and four, they are just, um, getting ahead with the pre-lowering of utilities, getting all of their survey monuments marked, all of the pre-construction activities are underway. They will be paving at the end of February. Um, in the district one, a area, um, the construction has officially begun. They are in the Viantrada neighborhood, um, milling and paving in there. Um, board of supervisors one B, um, they are, um, in, again, in the pre-lowering of utilities, getting ahead with the survey, doing those kind of pre-action um, activities, and they are starting in the Riverside Terra um, subdivision. In Board of Supervisors 1 and 3, they are um, pre-lowering of utilities, um, and they are already paving in the Rancho Feliz Sunset Manor subdivisions. Um, Southeast Milling and Paving, they have pretty much wrapped up in the Vail area and are moving to J6, um, actually out there right now. Um, we have had to skip over Marianne Cleveland when we were getting ready to mill and pave out there with some additional review. They discovered that there were some um, TEP manholes that were actually in the road that we had to um, work around. So we, because of TEP's process for utility adjustments, um, they couldn't meet the time frame um, for the window we had scheduled for Mary and Cleveland. They didn't want to hold up the rest of the project um, while waiting around for that. So we have um, authorized Southern Arizona Paving to um, work with TEP for those utility adjustments. And then they will be coming back in June, actually, for the Mary and Cleveland portion of the milling and paving. Um, this works out actually pretty well in the consideration that the high school is right along that section of Marion Cleveland that we will be milling and paving. So by pushing it to June, we won't be impacting school traffic. Um, the J6, they are out there milling and paving now, and they will be done, um, I believe, by the end of this month, maybe early in February. Um, and then... Aravaca, mill, and pulverize and pave project. Um, all of our pulverization is complete. All of the milling and paving operations are now um, complete as of this week, and they are doing cleanup work. Um, on the Aravaca area project, we wanted to address some concerns that probably have heard of already, um, but we just wanted to let you know what was going on out there. Um, on the section of Aravaca Road that's um, it's going from I-19 into the town of Aravaca, we have had some pavement damage pop up. Um, it has varied in severity um, through that area. Um, some of it's just rough road um, that was once smooth. Some of it's potholes that are popping up. So you can see some of these pictures, you know, we're trying to um, stay on top of everything. We're monitoring it very closely and pothole patching some of the worst areas. Um, but we are digging into and investigating what is going on out there. You can see in the top um, right corner picture, there's, you can see some of the cracking, that's a stress cracking that's occurring. So <clears throat> here's what we know. Um, the pulverization was a test process for us. This is the first time we've taken on a pulverization process. Um, the problems are uh, isolated to the pulverized sections. 
Um, of the, we did 36.5 miles of pulverized problems and about 10, less than 10% is what we're estimating as being, having become a problem area. Generally, it's all located in the westbound direction um, from Aravaca Road to the Border Patrol Station, um, from the, starting at the Border Patrol Station going into Aravaca. We have noticed some other areas popping up. There's now some areas in the eastbound direction that we're watching really closely, as well as some closer into the Amada. Um, so we are, our initial, when this first popped up, we did a quick um, geotech analysis and saw off the side of the road and discovered that there was some clay soils. Um, clay soils tend to be expansive. Um, when they're old and baked in the ground, uh, they're stable. But with the pulverization process, obviously, we kind of broke that crusted surface um, and mixed them in with the um, millings of the road. And so that could be causing some of our problem. Um, the problem is continuing to develop. So, like I said, we are monitoring it closely to see what other areas are becoming a problem. Um, on a good note, we have not seen any of these problems develop on Ruby Road or Aravaca Sasabi, which were also pulverization um, project or pulverization roads. Um, we are potholing patching um, the problems that are appearing. We have reduced speed limits in some of the rougher areas to make sure everybody is aware and traveling safely. And we have contracted with Conform Attack for more in-depth geotech analysis. Um, when we first started contacting them, we were looking at the initial four areas that we had identified. We have now expanded that to tw testing in 12 different areas along that segment. Um, we plan to continue to monitor the road until things stabilize, and then once things have stabilized, we will identify what that repair limits will be. And we are going to use that geotech analysis to help guide that um, fix whether that be um, milling and repaving, doing some type of treatment to the subgrade, over excavating the subgrade so that we make sure that we come back in with a stable base surface for that road. So those are all pending and um, we will be giving you further future updates as uh, more information comes available.